Hey everyone, this is our very first book haul. That's right. Um, so since Clint has been in Peru for two and a half months now, um, he's bought some Three books. next week, I'm very excited. Yeah. Uh, he's bought some books. Um, we went to Lima recently and I bought some books as well. So we thought we'd do a book haul um, to talk about the books that we bought, both in English and in Spanish, yep. and so you guys can see what we've got. Yeah. So I think the best one to start out with is Little Prince, El Principito. So uh, Lily and I really want to um, improve our Spanish abilities, and so one of the best ways to do that is kids' books. And so um, I've been starting this one. It's still tough. Um, you know, we have a lot. We, we both read this book in English, right? So we're familiar with the story, right. which is very helpful. Um, but it's still really hard. Yeah, it's it's still tough, but I've learned a lot already. So, um, so this is a good one. Um, and you want to show the one you got? So, this is a story that I think almost everyone is familiar with. Um, it's Blanca Nieves, which is Snow White. So this is in Spanish. Um, it's I think it's. Um, Spanish, Spanish, like from Spain. Ah. So it's a little different, but it'll still be good. But it's it's a straight up, straight up kids book. Um, so that will be really good to learn from. All right. And and per my my normal habits, I kind of just I kind of pick up some randoms here and there that I know might be interesting and good. So per my um, philosophy and political science, The Republic by Plato. Um, just kind of a random one that might be interesting. And also some Voltaire. I haven't really read a lot of Voltaire, so I'd like to get a little bit more. I haven't seen some of these that he bought previously, oh. so this is <laughs> new for me too. <laughs> right. So, El Mundo Tal Como Va, The, mo the World As It Is, World As It Goes. Um, interesting. I started a little bit of it, but this is probably a little bit beyond my level right now in Spanish, so it'll be something to, uh, to kind of catch up with later. Um, and then I also found at a fair here in uh, Arequipa that lasted until a couple weeks ago, it was there for like two weeks, uh, a bunch of J.R.R. Tolkien's books. And I've never even heard of this title. So... I wonder what this is in English? Right. I think it's Rogerando. I don't know yeah. why that would be different. But this is, a, this is... I don't think this is related to the rest of the Middle Earth kind of saga, but uh, it's about uh, pets. A pet dragon? Pet dragon. So, does it have illustrations inside? I think it does not. Oh, I know it does because it it's does? A, uh, by Alan Lee, I believe. Ah, okay. So it still has um, illustrations by Alan Lee. So if you're a Lord of the Rings fan, you'll know who Alan Lee is. Right. Um, so piggybacking on that, um, when Clint found the book fair, he sent me a message in Frenzy because he knows how much I like Tolkien. Um, so he found The Hobbit um, in Spanish. So this... <coughs> I won't be able to do for sure right now. Right. Um, this is definitely going to be beyond my abilities as of now. This is only our third copy of either The Hobbit or The Lord of the Rings that we have. We have a lot of copies. Whatever. Um, this one is not illustrated at all, right. um, which is just fine, but um, this will definitely be above my level right now. You might be able to get through it. Maybe. Um, but at least we're familiar with the story, so that's a good starting point. Yep. Yep. So then um, I really am interested in getting more familiar with some of the lore in Latin America, some of the, um, the really famous authors, famous stories. And so um, Gabriel Garcia Marquez is something I've read in English. Uh, I've, I've read A Hundred Years of Solitude, and it was fantastic. And a couple short stories. A couple so. short stories. They're all really, really good. And so I picked up a couple for uh, in, in Spanish. Um, Los Funerales de la Mama Grande. And El Antonio del Patriarca, which I don't really know what both of these are about. These are totally new to me. From the from the other side of, of, of uh, non-Spanish speaking Latin America is Paulo Coelho. So he's a Brazilian author. Um, I've read The Alchemist before in English. One of my favorite books. Um, a good friend of mine, Lynn, if you're watching this, uh, uh, gave me the book on the condition that I pass it along to somebody else. So I wanted to buy it again. So this is the Spanish version of The Alchemist. It's really good. If you haven't read it, it's a quick read. It's, it's really, really good. And if you want to go into some of yours there. So mine are clearly for beginner Spanish yeah. learners. Um, so the next book I bought, I actually don't have in English. I would like to um, own it in English. So 
It's by J.K. Rowling, so it's the tales of Beetle the Bard, but in Spanish, so Los Cuentos de Beetle el Bardo. <laughs> um, so I'm not sure when I'm going to get to this one. Um, it should be okay, so it's like fairy tales set in the Harry Potter world. Um, if you have seen or read Harry Potter, you'll obviously know what this is about. This is a beautiful copy, too. Yeah, it's really neat. Um, yeah. And I think it has some illustrations yep. um, to go with the fairy tales. Um, this is the Deathly Hallows, so I think you can tell if you have uh -huh. read the book. You're familiar with it at all? Yep. yep. Um, so it's going to be good to read, um, but I think I'd like to read it in English first, just so I can be more familiar with the fairy tales before I read in Spanish. So sure. Um, so, a, a really uh, reputable and notable Peruvian author is uh, Mario Vargas Llosa, and I didn't know that he was born in Arequipa, and so here we are in Arequipa, and um, I don't know if he spent a lot of, of, of his life in, in Arequipa, this is a lot of his kind of on writing, um, and some of his short essays, um, so this is all in Spanish, so I'm really curious to see kind of his perspective on Arequipa. Um, it's got a few other uh, bits about his younger years, it sounds so like to me. So Arequipa y el Escribador? Uh-huh, uh-huh. And um, so I'll be curious to know more about, about him and, and some of his work because because I already read, because I couldn't put it down, um, Who Killed Palomino Molero? And that's in English. And this is in English. I could not put it down. It's a, it's a quick read, but I loved it. Um, having spent quite a bit of time in Peru over the last few years, getting a good idea of some of the kind of the unspoken or unnoticed aspects of culture. It was a gorgeously um, uh, well-played aspect of the story, but I'm, I'm sure that it, it exists in a lot of his other works, but I really, really enjoyed this one. Yeah. I'll be interested to read this because it it's quite small. Uh -huh. um, and it's fiction? It's fiction. It's a great it's a great introduction to, to Yosa. I, I read that it's, it's a, one of those ones that you want to read first just to get an idea of of how he writes his style, it was it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. So another one of his is the Feast of the Goat. And this is one of the um, later works of his after he won the Nobel Prize in 2010. I believe he wrote this shortly before then. I could look, um, or shortly after. But this is about the dictatorship in the Dominican Republic, which we visited some years ago. And so I'm pretty interested to see that. But it's kind of a fiction. But it's uh, centered around that real life event. It's a pretty cover too. Yeah, it's, it's got kind of, kind of like a cool illustration. Yep, yeah, piece of the goat. So. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, I think I'll go next. Yeah, go for it. So again, trying to learn Spanish in something that is familiar, um, I found a graphic novel um, from my favorite Shakespeare play. So it's A Midsummer Night's Dream in Spanish. Um, the illustrations are actually really good. Yeah. Um, I'll be excited to. It looks a little bit like those those Bible pamphlets that they hand out. A little. <laughs> kind of the same illustrations. Um, I like it. Yeah, but it'll be, <laughs> since I know the story, I think it'll be good to, to read. And plus it's graphic novel form, so obviously it's not a lot of written word, but it should be uh, maybe a little easier to read that way. And it's right. really pretty. I, it's, it's a nice copy. Yeah. yeah. So one of the biggest reasons that I'm that we are down here is climate change. And so I want to kind of get an idea of what some of the contemporary thoughts and feelings are and writings and, and research is on climate change. And so this is from a university in Chile writing on um, the challenges of climate change. Uh, if you're not aware, um, some of the, the most vulnerable countries to effects of climate change are in the tropics, particularly Peru is one of them. Um, we, we experienced uh, in this country uh, earlier this year a lot of flooding uh, that is at least in part related to climate change. Obviously there was a strong El Nino uh, that took place over the last year, but in any case, um, it'd, be, it'd be great to know some of the, the thoughts and feelings on what's going on with climate change in the region. Do you know if this author is Peruvian? It's several authors. It's, okay. a, it's a compendium of, of different professors around Chile. Okay. Uh, okay. So this is not really a book, but I found it at, um, which bookstore in Lima? This was, uh, uh, Camunitas. Yeah. Um, and Clint writes journals, so, sure um, it, I thought it really was up his alley. Um, it's just plain blank pages, but it is star charts, 
and uh, it's got the. Like, I'm known if you're around me at night, I'll just be, I'll just constantly point out constellations yeah. of the moon, planets. So. Uh, it's really pretty. Yep. Yeah. And you can always see that stuff here in our keeper, which is nice. So um, the last ones are are just kind of a, a way for me to to shore up more of my information and knowledge about Peru. So I got three volumes on Peruvian history. This first one is, these first two are from the university, uh, the Catholic University, La Católica in, in, in Peru, in, in Lima. Um, the first is a contemporary history. So this is kind of, uh, I believe it's since independence to now. And so uh, it's kind of like a, the most recent history. Yeah. And then if you spend any time in Peru, probably Chile, I haven't spent a lot of time in Chile, I've, I've visited, but if you spend any time in Peru, you notice that there is a rather significant rivalry between uh, Peru and Chile. Uh, and a lot of that stems from the War of the Pacific, uh, La Guerra del de Pacifico. So I want to know more about that. There's, there's some things that I'm already running to in my business uh, dealings that kind of are, are limiting factors because of this ongoing rivalry with, with Chile. So. Um, so this is actually a Peruvian author that has a Chilean perspective through the story of the war. I'd like to know more about the war, why it was fought, and some of the aftermath and that kind of thing. So I started reading this one. It's pretty funny. Um, it was clearly beyond my ability because those are going to be tough. It's it's college level, and so you can see here. I just marked the heck out of the pages because I'm trying to learn the vocab and I'm trying to also get significant parts of the narrative and so it's a little bit beyond my ability yet but I'm getting there. And then the last one I got is kind of a, it's actually a high school textbook because it's a secondary school textbook on the history of Peru. So this has got everything. This is from the Inca to now and so it's really big, it's really big and it's, it's, uh, it's a textbook. So it'll be, it'll be secondary school uh, level reading which actually might be a little bit more up my alley. And it's also much more broad, kind of a casting a wider net. So I think what I'll do is I'll read this one first and then go back to the other two um, to, to get a better idea of the history of the country. Uh, so the last one I have is just for fun, I guess. Um, my sister and I had just been talking about Hans Christian Andersen, um, who is an author of fairy tales and other things. And we found this really beautiful copy um, in Lima, was it? Who was that? Was that Kumantas? Kumantas. See. Um, so it's really, really pretty, um, and it's got this nice box, so the actual book comes out. Yeah. Um, and it's it's really good quality. It's really nice. Um, it's got about forty five different stories in it. It's illustrated. Um, illustrated. So it'll be really nice to reread a lot of these that I had read previously as a child, and then. Um, stuff that I have never even heard of, so right. um, that'll be nice, and it's a good addition to our library, I think, and it's, we spent too much money on it, probably, <laughs> I, we didn't mention this, but books in Peru are pretty pricey. They can um, be. There's, we haven't found any used bookstores or right. anything, so. Well, correction, we found used books, yeah. but they're usually um, not in great condition, they're not well stored. And not contemporary either, right. so they're, they're actual old books, right. which are good. Right. But um, not contemporary, so probably spent too much on this. But it was so pretty, and um, it'll be a good it'll addition. Be nice in the library. So, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, those are the books that we've bought in both Arequipa and Lima. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what we have so far. Maybe if we buy more books, we shouldn't. <laughs> we um, shouldn't. But if we buy more books, maybe we'll do another book haul. Yeah. Um, and maybe we can do be like a Spanish book collection uh, sure. once we get all of our belongings from the states. Sure. Um, our library is on the way. Yeah. Officially. Hopefully. <laughs> Officially. So I think that's it. We'll wrap it up. Yeah. And uh, we'll talk to you guys later.